Dale Jr. is out of contract at NBC, and Tony Stewart has called out Stewart Haas Racing. We'll start with probably the biggest news over the last 24 hours, and it's the fact that Dale Jr. on his podcast, the Dale Jr. Download, find it wherever podcasts are available for you, said that he doesn't have a contract with NBC right now. His contract was up at the end of 2023, and they haven't re-signed anything for 2024. He did say that he hopes to be back next year, and they're working towards an agreement, and that will put him back in the booth, the booth that he's been in since he joined NBC in 2018 as a color commentator. But it is really interesting that NBC didn't get that deal done before we got to 2024. And for Dale to go public about it too, it's a little odd. I fully expect him to be back at NBC. On the podcast, he said that he loves being at NBC. That's his home. He wants to be back in the booth there with Rick Allen, Steve Letarte, and Jeff Burton. Yeah, I don't know if we all want Jeff Burton to be back, but that's a personal preference. However, for Dale to, one, go public with it, but two, also not have this deal done yet is, like I said, surprising. And me, just thinking out loud here, I don't actually know anything that's going on with his negotiations. NASCAR does have three new media partners coming into the sport in 2025. This could be a really good play to end up getting paid a lot more and maybe working less as well, depending on what he wants to do. But they have Amazon, TNT, and the CW all joining next year. And I do think that when we hear about the broadcast lineups for both Amazon and TNT, I think that there's going to be some crossover from the broadcast booths that you see on Fox and NBC. We saw that in the past when Larry Mack was calling some races on TNT back in the day, and I think it could happen again because trying to find two new booths essentially for both broadcast partners is limited in terms of the amount of people that they can go out there and get. Hopefully Jamie McMurray gets one of those seats because he absolutely deserves it, and I wish that he was in the Fox booth uh, over Boyer, but again, personal preference. For Junior, though, not having that deal in place, maybe he's using it as leverage. Could not. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just like, dude, I've got Dirty Mo Media, which has done really well. It just added the teardown from The Athletic, Jeff Gluck and Jordan Bianchi. They, of course, have Door Bumper Clear, Dale Jr. Download, which is three episodes a week now. And then they have Dirty Mo Doe, if you're interested in the gambling side of things. And then they always have, you know, another little offshoot one here or there, special project. Dirty Mo's turned into, you know, maybe the go-to place. Oh, also Denny's podcast. But the go-to place for for NASCAR podcast and NASCAR media outside of the like NASCAR media group, essentially. So what they built up there is great. For Dale, though, maybe he just wants to focus on that. Again, fully expecting to be back in the NBC booth. Just surprising that, you know, this deal has not been done yet. And we'll see what happens. He seemed pretty optimistic on his podcast about it. Like I said, go listen to it. I'd put a clip in here, but, you know, Mike Davis is going to tag it and then take away the monetization and make my video go away and all the other things that the dark side of NASCAR can do to you. I'm just kidding. Uh, but they would tag it. <laughs> they will absolutely do that. It would make sense if Dale wanted to either not do this year or just do a one-year deal and then see where they're at next year as well. But for NBC, locking him up long-term or for at least the next couple of years makes total sense. Rick Allen's fine in the booth. I know we all complain about him from time to time, but like more often than not, he does call a good race minus the times when he like yells aggressive, goes around, or tries to poetically, you know, talk about a driver and just off in left field somewhere. Steve Tart's voice, nah, fine, whatever. He's gonna say some of the most generic crew chief stuff where again, if you're casual, you're like, oh, that's really interesting. But if you watch it uh, every single week, you're like, yeah, no, no kidding the old Will Buxton, a car has four tires type of thing. If you finish first in the race, you win the race type of thing. And then you have Jeff Burton out there. And as long as Shane Van Gisbergen isn't in the race, he's going to be pretty okay in terms of his enunciation. But eh, yeah, I don't know. Again, personal preference. So we'll see what happens with Dale. Just thought it was a really interesting topic. The fact that he hasn't been confirmed yet. Has it doesn't have a deal. Weird. Moving on to another driver out there, which is Tony Stewart, obviously the owner, co-owner of Stewart Haas Racing, and Stewart Haas Racing's had a really bad last two seasons. Of course, in 2023, they went winless in the Cup Series as a company for the first time in that team's history. 
at, at least the Stuart Haas portion of that team's history. The year before that, they ended up winning three races, two with Kevin Harvick and one with Chase Briscoe, but it's been a really down two years for Stuart Haas Racing, especially coming off just in 2020 when Harvick racked off nine wins uh, pretty easily right there, and it was like, okay, then he goes winless in 2021, and then gets two wins in 2022, and then winless again in 2023, and they decide to replace the two guys that had wins on that team. One of them retired, well, both of them technically retired, and Eric Amarola and Kevin Harvick, and now they have Josh Berry filling in for, or replacing rather, Kevin Harvick in that four car and Noah Gragson in the 10 car. And you say what you want, but Eric Amarola did have Cup Series victories to his name and Noah has none in his first year in Cup in 2023, at least that partial season that he ran with Legacy Motor Club, didn't look very good. So Tony Stewart came out and said, we absolutely have to do better. And he was talking on SiriusXM NASCAR and Kelly Crandall from Racer.com pulled the quotes together. And he said, we've had a miserable two years in a row and I'm tired of taking the blame for everybody for why the cars aren't running well. I think the fans need a reality check and a reminder that I'm not the crew chief. I'm not the engineer. I don't dictate the setups on the car. I give these guys the tools to do the job and we just haven't got it done these last couple of years. And then he goes on to say basically that what you saw in 2023, that's not the standard. So the standard's not the standard. Never understood that. For Tony, though, he called everybody out, and he I don't love this type of leadership, but he basically took all the blame and said, not mine anymore. I give you guys all the tools. You figure it out now. And I do think that there is some credence to the fact that Tony's been pretty hands-off over the last two to three years with that team as he's gotten more into drag racing. He got married. He's been spending more time at the drag strip with his wife, which is totally fine. That's great. But when you're not at the shop and you don't have this hands-on approach, there is, there are some people out there that think that when you don't have your hands-on approach like that and your employees don't see you caring as much about that, then the employees don't care. It's like a trickle-down effect in a way. And you can see it not just in racing, but in other industries as well. And there is some thought and some validity, I think, to that thought about this with Tony Stewart, where he has his hands-off approach and his team and all of his members are like, yeah, well, the bots doesn't care that much, then we don't care that much. Not that they don't want to win, but maybe there's just some sort of disconnect there. And Tony, as he said throughout this offseason, that he said he's been spending a lot of time at the shop this year. He said we had a rah-rah meeting. He's excited about it. They ran an overly ambitious social media campaign reminding everybody that they're winners, that they're badasses, that they're unapologetic, and all these great things, which were fine if you're winning races. They haven't been. So Tony called everybody out. He wants his engineers to engineer better. He wants the crew chief to set the cars better. He wants his drivers to go out there and win races. Having said all that, I do expect, I, in my predictions, you know, think that Stuart Haas Racing gets one to two wins this year. I think they find their way back to victory lane. I think they have really talented drivers over there. Noah Gragson still is a bit of a toss-up, but we know Josh Berry is very talented. Ryan Priest can easily win on a short track if he can just keep the car and his penalties in check. And then you also have Chase Briscoe, who's won at Phoenix before. He seemingly has performed better as, you know, he's been in the Cup Series, which is what you want to see. And I think that we eventually will see him, you know, get to that point. But Tony put him on blast. He called them all out. And whether you like that approach or not, he did it. And we're going to see if it pays off for them in 2024. But just kind of interesting that he went public with this to basically, you know, send a warning shot to his team. Like, we expect to be better. And if we're not, I don't know what that means. Does that mean he sells? Not to Dale Jr. That's not happening. Don't put that in the comments. Or does he fire a lot of people and make a lot of changes? Remains to be seen. He's also in a manufacturer contract year with Ford. We'll see if they end up re-signing with Ford uh, throughout the season for 2025 and beyond. Right now, I think that makes the most sense. There's been some talk about Ford wanting to maybe put more resources into front row motorsport. Not sure if that's going to happen. They did go shopping last year. They approached 2311. They also approached the Chevy team as well about joining Ford. So Ford's out there looking around, and I'm not sure if Stuart Haas Racing fits their future, but I also don't know if Stuart Haas Racing fits the future at Chevrolet either, at least as a tier one, maybe even tier two team. And Toyota, Tony famously left a Toyota team and Joe Gibbs Racing to go start a Chevy team. So I don't know, but money does talk, so we'll wait and find out. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Dale Jr. situation, what you think about Tony Stewart's comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter 
at Break Hard Blog.